you guys came here and put this new defense together, you weren't necessarily harping on what happened last year, but you did have a lot of players that Ryan said several times felt you know, a little salty about what, how they played last year. I'm just wondering if you, how you go about maybe harvesting that mentality without focusing so much on sort of the schematics of what happened last year. Just, you know, every day, you know, you take the field, you got purpose. Uh, I think every day you come, every day you, you go to work, you should have the goal to do it better than the day before. And so when you look at last year for each player, I think they, we approach it every day like we've got to improve, we've got to do what we know we can do mentality. So uh, I think that's their mindset. That's our mindset. It's been that since day one, and that's uh, our mindset going into this week. I know uh, typically when whenever something's new, people get excited about it, excited yeah. about what it can become. Obviously, you guys are playing well, but there seemed to be almost immediate buy-in to what you all as coaches were preaching to these players. I'm just wondering from your perspective, why maybe you think that was the case? Well I, well, I think it starts with Coach Madison and Coach Affleck, to be honest. Um, I think they, they, they outlined a clear plan. Uh, and uh, I think as a player, the plan that we outlined, I think really competitive guys get excited about it. And uh, I think that's the, the major reason, to be honest with you. I think it's linebackers, D-line, I mean, Coach Johnson, what he's done uh, for him, from his time here and what he's doing this year is uh, incredible. Uh, but I think the back end buy in, you know, the whole defense buys into the message. Uh, in that. So I don't. I, I, if you were to ask me where where does the credit go, I think it starts with those two. To be honest. Uh, front row right, uh, Tim from Letterman Row. Yeah, uh, Al. Watching Pete Warner this year compared to last year, uh, it seems like he's not only firing; he's almost got a hair trigger <laughs> yeah. in recognition. Uh, what are you noticing about his game? Just as this season is developing? Well, the, the best play was the, the short yardage play. They hadn't run that play. They hadn't run it in two years. It was a really good play. It was uh, under center, uh, quarterback reverse pivot. They ran a, an outside zone scheme, pin pool, of which they had a, a numerical advantage. And Pete, uh, that play, not only did he support the run and hard joint the block, he made the play on the tackle and knocked the guy back. Because I mean, you could think you would think like that play, you can fall and get a yard. Uh, so, uh, and, and credit Coach Madison again, man. Like, I think you just said the, the key thing was they anticipate. I think uh, his wisdom uh, in terms of being able to see an offense, kind of see what uh, they're trying to do based on what they what their formation is helps a lot. And I think when guys know what's coming, they play faster. Lord, you can see he played last year too. In that, yeah. Right? I mean, is that what is it what you're reaping the benefit of? I think I think so, but I, I think a lot has to go into what you just said. I think the guys anticipate what's coming, uh, and then but again, you take that play. They hadn't shown that, but you just you hardwired, man. You play hard, and it just it worked out. That was a huge play. And one quick thing: did they did they the snooker play where they got y'all for the one touchdown? Oh yeah. yeah. Was that y'all seen a steady diet of wide screens? For uh, you know, all yeah, year yeah. is that just a play off that? And what what do you reinforce with like Tuck and the defense uh, going yeah. forward? Yeah, well that play there. I mean, it, again, that was uh, at that part of the field. That's where they they show their tricks and their shots, and uh, it was a good fake. I mean, hell, they we were aggressive. They they played on that and just got the ball off. If you watch that clip, we had a guy close, uh, and uh, he threw it, and uh, so. I mean, I guess when you're aggressive like that, those things happen, you know. Um, and a consistent, you know, we can't consistently obviously give those up, but, um, you know, we're not going to lose our stinger, you know, and, uh, you know, we'll challenge our guys to, you know, just everybody be sound, do their job as best they can, and, uh, you know, we'll correct the mistakes as we go. But I'm, we, we didn't, after that play, we, we got back, and, you know, we just said, all right, guys, here's what happened. If it happens again, this is what we do, and let's move on. Keep playing. Front row right, uh, Austin from Letterman Road. Hey, Kyle, I know you've got this, these questions a lot about you know last year and the improvement, but you can only go back to March, January to see the improvement. Is there a different sense of confidence or aggression or anything else in your room since you first got here? Yeah, I mean, I think our guys are starting to feel more confident, but our focus is on what we need to improve on, um, and so. Like, I think our guys are really focused on, you know, cleaning up the little things that need to be cleaned up. Because as the year goes, you know, this opponent we have coming up this week, I mean, we're going to get everybody's best shot. And so uh, the 
whole goal is at the end of the year you're playing your best football. And the only way you do that is you incrementally get better and you focus on what you need to improve on. So I think our guys are feeling confident, but they also, like today's practice is, is going to be a, you know, you ain't going to feel good. You know, you, get new, you got new plays in, you're going against a new opponent, and we're physically going to challenge them. And, and emotionally, they got to be into it. So, uh, so I think they, they feel confident, but they, they know the works that the work that is that needs to be done. I think that's their focus. When you talk about some of those little things, what what are you emphasizing with them at this point? The stance, uh, eyes, just for me, hand placement, uh, all these little things. And when you play really, really good teams and really good players, just thinking one on one, you're going against someone who has equal talent or better talent. Your technique's going to be the equalizer. And uh, I think as, as players, that's why the little things like when Coach Halfley talks about, the, your footwork has to be accurate so you don't lose a step. You know, Coach Johnson talks about his hand placement so that you can get inside leverage, so you can get off the block that much sooner to make the play. All that little stuff is what we have got to attack, and that's what, we, that's what our focus is. So um, those are, for example, some things that we, uh, that we focus on. Front row left, Nathan from Cleveland.com. Baron Browning had said that the kind of the relationship you guys developed early on has been the reason why he's started the year so well. Just how did you try to reach him uh, yeah. early on, and, and, and what worked there? Well, I'm a, the reason why Baron is having success is because he's worked really hard, and he's talented. He worked, and uh, I think we do have a good relationship. It's honest. Uh, he has a relationship with my wife, my kids. Uh, I think all that stuff's important whenever you're working with somebody, but. To answer your question, how did I reach? I mean, I just, he's a good kid, man. I mean, he's, uh, he wants to do well. Uh, I think our relationship is honest. You know, we don't, we don't play the, uh, you know, the PC. I mean, if something's not right, it's not right. And if something's right, we talk about it, we build on it. So, um, and through that process, I think we've grown closer. Uh, but, but I think that's a big reason why I think when you deal with people and they're honest with you, you don't have to worry about, there's no, you know what I mean. There's no, uh, there's nothing ambiguous, man. Everything's clear. And uh, if you want to do well, this is what you need to do. You go about the business of doing it. So Baron, credit Baron uh, for his success. But he's still got a lot of things to prove on. Uh, and I know he would, if he was in here now, he'd say the same thing. So that's what our focus is. He mentioned that he's playing a lot more confidence this year. I guess kind of what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Some of that, I assume, probably just comes from getting on the field more, yeah. playing more, and doing things. But did you feel like you got to help kind of instill that, like? Did, did he come into the into this off season with still a belief in how good he could be? Yeah, I think when I first met him, I think he had a sense of how good he uh, could be. I mean, he was a highly recruited kid. Uh, I think that uh, he said the word instill. I don't. I don't think we don't. I don't instill anything. All I do is uh, if you have a spark, I'm gonna pour gas on it, and uh, hopefully he, you know turns into a blaze. I think that's what all coaches do. So like he has a spark, you know, and then I just uh, we we go about the business of trying to uh, to, to you know, create a, a blaze, man, a fire. And uh, so I think it was always there, though. You know, I think it was always there. I think it's still there now. So uh, you know, I think that's uh, I think that's confidence comes from, from that for sure. Front row right, uh, Bill uh, from the dispatch. Uh, Malik Harrison. Uh, one of these guys, that, as well as he's played, he's still some kind of, somehow is under the radar. Um, what are your impressions of just how good a player he is and what makes him special? Well, I think Malik is, uh, has a chance uh, to be one of the best in the country. Uh, I think it's, uh, <clears throat> and I'll tell him that, you know, there's no, you know, I, there's no like, uh, you know, keep a guy, I just, I'm honest. I think he has the ability, but you've got to, you got to exercise that ability every day. So, like you said, he's under the radar. Uh, I, I really can't speak to that, but I do know that he, you know, every every game he's in there, he's got to make him his his uh, his play, you know, speak for itself. You know, he has to, to give that much effort. It really just comes down to effort, and he's done that. He's given great effort, uh, and I think if he does that, everything else will take care of itself. I think he's very talented. I think he's very bright. Uh, I think he. Uh, very capable of doing a lot of different things. You know, we had him playing, you know, uh, backer. We had him playing at the line of scrimmage a couple of times. I mean, he can do a lot of different things. So, uh, real excited and uh, really excited.
we're excited about where Tariq, or uh, excuse me, Malik is uh, trending. Yeah, one, one more question on Pete Warner. Yeah. There was a game uh, against uh, was it Houston, I think, where he played as a deep, deep safety. Yeah. Can you explain just how versatile he is and why you have the confidence in him to use him in that kind of role? He's very athletic and very smart and highly accountable. So um, I think with any of those guys, like guys like that, man, you, they can do those things because uh, you know they're going to going to do their job. And uh, he has the skill set to do that. I mean, I wouldn't say that you know he'll have a steady diet of it, but he's good enough to do that, especially on that particular play that we had. He did a heck of a job at it. So. He's very talented, but he's very talented. And final questions, the front row left up. Uh, Barron and Tuff have played fairly equal snaps so far this year. What have you thought of, of how you guys have managed sort of that balance with those two guys, and, and how do you think they, they, they complement each other? Playing? Yeah, I, th I think, you know what, uh, I think we've done a really good job of that because I think, you know, the one thing you see, like, on tape when you watch us, at least when I watch us, you see guys run into the ball, man, from the front to the back. I think uh, I think the way you, you rotate, guys, you, you kind of preserve some of that, 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 that extra fire. And so, like, you look at a guy like Brandon, or uh, Barron, excuse me, he's, uh, he's explosive, he, you know, he has a motor. I think he's able to play at a high level longer. Uh, and then same with Tuff. So I think we've done a good job of that. I think they play off each other well. Uh, you know, tough, uh, tough and Baron have both played you know multiple spots in, in what we're doing. Uh, I think we've handled that pretty well. And again, every week it's its own challenge. But uh, I think both guys physically are a place they hadn't been uh, in years past because of that. And uh, you know, the ego shrinks. You know, I think it's about team. And, and uh, when the next guy's in there. They, uh, they're looking for feedback. They, every time we come off the field, they're talking to each other. Oh, would you see this West off football? And then next time they go, they, they play on that. So it's a really good deal. Uh, and they're competing, too. And, and Tuff is a guy, I mean, he's a two-year captain. We know how much of a leader he is yeah. for this team. Um, you know, but he's not playing every single snap. He, he, he is out there a lot in important snaps, but he's not out there all the time. Is that, you know, when you have, he seems so important to you the way you guys talk about him oh, he's for the part of the defense. Yeah. Uh, how? What's the conversation like with him? Just you know, you're not going to be out there every snap, but you're still yeah. a leader for us. Just that. <laughs> just what you just said, and, and he explained to him, here's why. Because we want to see you play at the highest level. It's a long year, so there's no ego in him. I think he understands his role, and uh, I think any leader, like you think about the leadership, uh, you have to be seen, but you also have to be heard and felt. You don't need to necessarily be in the arena to be those, to, to do those two things. So even though he's not out there, he still is being heard. He still is being felt because of his ability to engage. So I think that is to answer your question: How do you lead when you don't play? And he is playing quite a bit. Uh, that's how you do it. And uh, I think he's he's uh, embraced that and has done a great job. Man. Really has. Coach, thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks, Al.